This isn't live, is it? If this is live, respond to me because it shouldn't be live yet. <laughs> See, how do I get the chats to pop up? Oh, we are live. Oh shoot, sorry y'all. <laughs> I thought I scheduled it to go live in five minutes, but we're live. <laughs> Welcome, I wasn't ready, but whatever. That's how it goes. Um, I'm gonna, I might actually, I wonder if I could flip this I want to see how the I want to see all the chats in the feed. I haven't done a live one in a while. Live chats. Okay, there we go. Now I can see everything. Um, welcome everyone. Thanks for tuning in. This is uh, it's been a while, honestly, and the echo in here is going to be terrible. So you're just going to have to bear with me. Um, but this is the new studio, new office, uh, long long time in the making. I've been editing out of a bedroom for. 15 years, 16 years. <laughs> Literally, it was like my desk and my bed since I was a teenager. So this, uh, this feels really good. It is, it is quite, quite the, the mess right now. Like it's still storage. That's like a box that needs to, to go. And a bike that's broken. Uh, you see my light. Um, I went fishing today. It was impromptu, went fishing with some friends. So got some gear in here. We're gonna we're gonna go through all of that, but anyway, this is a this is a setup in progress currently. Um, I have been. We recently moved. We're we're pretty close to where we used to live, but uh, we did move, and so in that process, I I think if anyone remembers, I, I shared a photo of this room a year ago, and that was when we were painting it, and I painted the floor with epoxy, and I thought we were gonna I was gonna be in here last year, and it didn't happen. Um, but I am now, and I've been spending the last two weeks getting stuff set up, and it feels really good to have, you know, a clean work area again. And uh, obviously, I always have a afternoon coffee. All the t all the chats moved away. I'd... I'm trying to figure out. This is still I haven't done a live in a while. Um, yep, Hawaii is bombing. It looks pretty sick. Honestly, it'd be pretty cool to be there. But I'm home. We've had some good waves. No complaints there. Uh, anyway, we'll do a little walkthrough, um, and then I will break y'all down. I'll paint a sick mural for, for you. Um, I actually want this to be gray. Uh, this needs painted. So basically what happened was I just got, uh, climate control like three weeks ago. So this wall has been open for like a year and, uh, that needs painted still. Um, let's see. First off, we got the desk. Nothing's really changed here. Same old setup, except if you remember, uh, you're not gonna be able to see it, but there's a portion of this desk that flips up and everything was set up on it. So I had less workspace. So this feels nice and clean. Pretty stoked on that. The big improvement, like I'm going to just wheel, wheel around for y'all. The big improvement, and this is insane for me, y'all. Um, I, have been, like I said, editing out of a bedroom. All of my camera gear was in a closet. And not only in a closet, I mean, basically, this is basically a closet, but not, not only a closet, but like a very, a very small closet. So like everything was just stacked on top of each other. It was very unmotivating to like get ready to go film. And uh, honestly, after like five years of filming stuff all the time, like every week, I got a little burnout. We'll touch on, on that more later, but we got the new, the new station, which is pretty sweet. Down below, we got the drone and just some boxes. Camera bag, uh, mid-level, pretty stoked. I built out this little charging station. Um, so we got power strip here that I can just you know, hit a button, turn on, turn off. And all the chargers are hooked up. This little thing has all the charged batteries in it. So once everything charges, goes up in here, then that's all organized. Um, here's just like kind of GoPro gear on the go. Cameras, lenses, tripod. This is insane because for the last like five years, all that stuff has literally just been piled on top of each other. My charger has been on the floor and uh, kind of a fire hazard, dust and stuff collected on them. Sturdy, so this will be much cleaner, safer. And then up top we got, uh, but chargers and lenses, 
Actually, all my lenses are down here. It's basically just chargers and some empty boxes and cords and then GoPro accessories. And then top side, we got the gimbals, this epic picture of me and Jeffrey. Uh, see if I can get the light right for y'all to see it. It's pretty funny. Uh, my mom's old uh, film camera. Conch shell from the Bragg Summit. Uh, it was pretty cool to be a part of. And then these... Jack O'Neill sunglasses from O'Neill. What do you think about these? <laughs> um, so anyway, kind of, I'm, I'm, for the first time ever, I have like a creative space and the door won't close. I don't know what's keeping it from closing. We'll figure that out later. But for the first time ever, I have a creative space to edit and work and all that stuff. And so this space is where so many videos are gonna be made from. Not only am I just excited to, to have like a cleaner area for me to you know, sit here and edit, and also just to be able to tune it out. Like instead of laying in bed and staring at my desk and being like, oh, work, um, I can just shut it down, walk out the door, and go be a part of my family's life without thinking of work. And so that's super freeing, um, or will be. And, uh, yeah, so what the plans are for this room, let's, let's walk you over here. Before we dive into the boards, basically what I'm planning is over in this corner, we're gonna have some sort of chair station or, or couch. Uh, I measure it out, this, this room's 14 feet wide. So if I put, a, I don't want too small of a couch because I do wanna be able to sit next to someone without like, you know, holding hands and I think basically the couches I measured out are gonna be kind of tight over here. So I don't know if we'll go couch or two small chairs. But anyway, I want somewhere set up that I can just like have her camera, have the lights ready to go, and I can just sit down and film stuff to talk, to, to post for y'all. Or I, when guys are in town, they can come over, we can have a little chat conversation. I guess it would be like a podcast area. Not that I'm like starting a podcast or anything, but, uh, just a place, you know, that's decorated and comfortable to hang out, have coffee, chat, just like, you know, ramble like I am right now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that, that's gonna be one section, you know, and I'll have, I'll have my camera set up somewhere, somewhere here in the middle and then filming that way. Uh, I do plan also on pulling this desk out a little bit and being able to set up a camera looking at the desk or looking at me at the desk so that we can do live feeds looking through old footage. Um, gosh, all these, all these chats keep getting hidden. I don't know why. Oh, let me get through the, oh, whoa, what's up? Um, rant, uh, rant, Ramza, Ramza, Ramza. Uh, my ears are doing great. I'm good to go. Feels so awesome to have new ears again. Can't wait for the new boards to come in. Uh, Home Depot has Bluetooth outlets and switches. You can control them with your phone, look it up. Oh, that's pretty sick. Um, that would be super cool to, for, for lighting purposes. I'm gonna, hold on, I'm gonna screenshot that right now. That is a cool idea. Thank you for that idea. I don't know how, I can't react. I'm gonna pin it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I want this to be a place where I can set tripods up and set stuff up so that I can just sit down, hit record, put the footage on the computer and upload without, before doing it in my bedroom, I was like having to clean up the room. Not that the room was a mess, but I needed to organize it in a way to be able to set up cameras and film. And then I'd have to break it all down and it was just a pain. And so the more time went on, the less I liked doing that. Um, let's see, what else do we got in here? Uh, Zogs, Palmers, Foo, or I'm gonna have to go with Foo. I actually, I like to put sticky bumps down. So I'm a sticky bumps base coat guy. And then we'll use whatever temperature is right. And then I do Foo on top of that. That's like my, my go-to. I don't know why these chats keep going away. Uh, thank you for the statement about the e-bike battery. It's actually discharged. Um, it should be good to go, but I'm probably just gonna get rid of it. I don't ever use it and it broke. Um, it was given to me by this company, Nacto, as like a promo, but then they never t 
told me what to do with it or any of that and uh and how to promote it so like that kind of all just fell through but uh anyway um yeah so all right i'll keep continue i'm gonna keep talking and then i'll get back to the comments here in a bit um sicker portrait of my face on. <laughs> what's up adam um yeah, so basically you get the idea of what I want this little corner to be. You understand the concept behind the editing bay and the organization bin. Now, this is like a temporary thing. This is an old pie safe that my wife had in our house for, I think my, it, we had our computer in it so my kids could do schoolwork. They have a new setup now. But uh, I'm going to do some sort of open shelving or more shelves or cabinets or something that's better organization because... This little thing over here, first off, my wife and I bought, bought this piece when we got married almost 15 years ago, 14 and a half years ago. And uh, that was our island for our kitchen. <laughs> and we gave it to my dad and he doesn't use it anymore. So I got it back, cleaned it up. This is housing like all of my extra cords and stickers and stuff like that. Um, so I am going to turn this little, little ditty area into like a full-fledged organized shelf um, cabinet charging station. Probably gonna use some pegboard to do that. Um, and then the plan is that right here we'll have, you know, fins, wax, leashes, all that jazz. That's a photo of the lighthouse back in 2018 that Daniel Pullen took. It's actually my son's, he gave it to him. That's uh me walking up the beach and Oliver Kurtz about to paddle out. Winter Storm Grayson, uh, pretty crazy swell. But um, floating shelves save more space with LEDs on the bottom. I like that, man, you got all the ideas. You're, you're like in my head. Um, mason jars are the best to drink out of. Uh, anyway, so this will be basically my surf station so that when you come in the door, all the surf accessories are here alongside the boards. We got the whole quiver. Um, and then what I plan on going over here where this thing is, this is only temporary. This isn't long-term. I'm going to have a table that flips out with like a drop down black and white paper or whatever for shooting product stuff. Uh, so whether it's fins, lures, um, you know, clothing, whatever. And it's kind of a idea in progress, but this is going to be my like film area. And then I'm going to have, uh, two of those like board racks that you see in shaping bays, so, you know, whenever they're shaped like this. So the board, I don't even know how to, they're shaped like that. So the board can sit between them or on top. And uh, I'm gonna place those right here. Those will be movable so that um, I can pull boards off the rack, set them up, talk to you guys, go over, you know, what I'm riding, what swell I was using them for. I think I thought it'd be a cool idea to just like have that so that when I go to pack boards, or maybe when I go to unpack boards, because I don't like really giving away too much when a swell comes. But uh, after the fact, as I pull them out of the car and bring them back in, I can set them up, tell you what I rode and why and what I didn't ride, throw a couple clips in, kind of make it a little, a little more interactive and personal than just putting out edits. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically the gist of, of the office room. And uh, the goal here is that I'm more organized, I have my own personal space, creative space, and um, I can put out more videos. And the reason I've been putting out less videos is because I just got burnt out, honestly. Like, editing and working out of my bedroom, doing the same thing every day for four years was just, it got hard. And uh, as things have expanded with what I was creating, um, the space was confining and it was difficult. And so I'm already feeling like way more rejuvenated being here doing this. Um, so what happened was last winter kind of had like a, a rough mental breakdown, I would say was the best way to put it. I'm going to wrap y'all like explain that more in detail in a video coming soon. I am working on a vlog currently of the Hurricane Franklin swell. And at the end of that, I'm gonna do a whole talk piece about kind of what's been going on. But since you guys are here now, I can tell you. So you guys get first access. Um, 
yeah, so I was going through like a pretty hard time mentally and just got to a place where, you know, part of my struggle with editing was, was music and I was spending like, you know, sometimes six, eight hours a day looking for songs, not liking them. I basically started the vlog because I didn't like wasting clips and I wanted to just be able to put out more content. And then what I started creating from season one to two to season three, it got too complex. And I, I started trying to polish it off like too much for, for my, myself. Like if I was making enough that I could hire someone to help me, then yeah, I could put out content like that. But it just wasn't sustainable for me. And so I decided that, you know what? I need to revamp how I'm doing this and I need to revamp how, uh, you know, all of this works to make it, <laughs> I saw that, whoever said that, this is my job, <laughs> dingus, <laughs> get a job, this is my job, this is what I do. I sit at this computer 40 hours a week most weeks, that's my job, so. Um, <laughs> you're free to go watch someone else's videos. Um, anyway, I hit like a pretty gnarly mental area and got into a dark spot and just, you know, spent a lot of time debating on whether, you know, I was supposed to keep doing this or whether I was supposed to do something else for work. And through a lot of prayer, I just, I was able to like come out of that and realize that like, this is where I'm supposed to be and this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I was basically on cruise control, like doing what I do and not loving it anymore. And, um, you know, it's one of those things where like, if you love what you do, sometimes it can become obsessive. And I think that's how it got. I like was just too into it. I was, I don't know, making it more difficult than it needed to be. And really the whole point of this was to make it simpler, less difficult. And uh, the whole point of the vlog and YouTube and all that. And so anyway, I decided that I was gonna make a passion project and do a movie at the end of this year. At this rate, it might be early next year, but I'm gonna try and get it out the end of this year in December. Um, but make a movie, basically highlighting the last few years, um, talking about the things that I've gone through personally and um, the ways that I've gotten out of them and grown and where my head's at now, which is way better. And then getting back into vlogs and, you know, maybe not weekly videos, but bi-weekly or more raw content so that I can keep like posting stuff without worrying about it being like some polished perfection piece that I'm, you know, happy with, but just sharing the content as it happens. Because what was happening was I was editing so specifically that I was getting backed up on all the weeks of swell and then I, it just would spiral. I keep getting backed up. And when we have gnarly runs of swell, it's a lot to keep up with. So, uh, yeah, this, I think things are good. Things are good. Now had a good summer with the family for the first time, you know, last year, last summer I sat at my computer all summer. We barely fished. I barely went to the beach with my kids. I was just editing the whole summer. And you know, one of the perks of what I do for a living is to be able to have that free time with my kids. And I was just screwing up the balance of, of work and life. And uh, so I've worked on rebalancing it. I'm in a better place and I'm super excited to show you guys what's coming, but still, uh, still a work in progress. So we will get there. Um, but yeah, I think one of the things that I learned is that, you know, to love what you do, you got like, I basically just had to fall back in love with surfing was the thing and fall back in love with picking up my camera. I loathed the idea of grabbing my camera out of my closet to film. And I didn't like that because I like filming and uh, I like sharing, making movies and sharing stories with you guys and, and I love surfing. And so for me this year, I focused more on my social media stuff and, and the obligations I have towards the sponsors I have. And um, you know, I just, so many swells went surfing without a camera in hand and we filmed Jeffrey filmed them all. You know, every, we got document, we got stuff documented of like nearly every single one of those boards besides a couple of the big ones. And, um, you know, we're working on another season of under the glass and yeah, great things in the works. I'm really excited to show you guys the movie I'm working on. I have basically the whole song set list pulled out or organized. Um, I'm trying to get footage from O'Neill and from Surfline, from trips that I did with them the last two years. 
And yeah, I, I, I'm excited to tell the story and put it together in a piece that's like a movie to music I like, not, you know, just a vlog. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. And then 2024, we'll get back into the constant videos. But uh, this will be the new space where we do that. And I'm excited to share that with y'all and get the ball rolling and yeah, move on from what has been the last two years. Uh, Cause last year, last year was rough. Losing sponsors, um, you know, watching finances dwindle, dwindle and spending so much time at the computer. So I'm at a better balance now and figuring out how to make it work and I'm excited for what's ahead. So anyway, that's kind of the whole spiel. You guys are getting the breakdown of it before I tell anyone else. Um, yeah, so I don't think there's really anything else to touch on. Um, so I'll go scrolling back through the comments here. I kept trying to leave the live chat on, but it kept, it kept hiding it. Uh, so let me scroll back. I'll answer some, answer some questions, you guys. Let's see if you guys got any questions. Um, also, what a, what a run of swell we had this year. Just so you know, I'm planning on this fall season being the ender to the movie. So there's footage that I haven't put on social media that you, no one's seen that uh, I'm pretty stoked on. We, had, we got a lot of clips, so it should be, uh, it should be a pretty exciting piece. Um, oh, it went all the way to the top. Am I too late for the coffee topic? Christopher I made myself an iced latte. My wife got us a coffee machine for my 30th birthday four years ago and, uh, and Christmas. It was our like joint present to each other. It's super good. Uh, it's pretty easy to make <laughs> ice lattes though. You don't even have to froth the milk or anything. I have gotten good at frothing milk, but. Um, so yes, this is a new place. This office is in the downstairs area. Um, and yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting. So no, no, it is a renovation, um, but not, not at my old house. Um, have I rode the driver 3.0 yet? Yes, I have. Uh, I think I got a bad batch of them. Brett Weeks was asking if I've ridden it. I felt like it went really well, but I think they're glass too heavy. It just feels heavy. I was feeling Michael Dunphy's driver 3.0s and his felt way better and they're almost the same dimensions as mine. So I think I really just need to like order some more and turn the ones in I have. But it did go well. I haven't ridden it a ton. I've honestly ridden like the Almerics and the, and the Pizel Radius the most. So I kind of need to hop back on it. But because of how heavily glassed it is, I'm not as stoked on it. Uh, so, but the board feels good. Um, let's see. Um, have you read the drive? Make a wheel rack for fishing rods moving in and out fast. I'm actually planning to do the, the fishing rods up on the roof. Uh, in this little hallway I have right here, or on the ceiling. Um, uh, there's Daniel and his get a job statement. <laughs> have a good one, man. Uh, get 40 less one strip, 39 major categories of diesel. Oh, disease. Um, some POV raw paddle out sessions like Nathan Florence, much easier to edit than vlogs. MB Surfer, you are right. And I, I did start doing that. Uh, as you know, some of you may notice last spring, I started uploading some just old ones. Um, but the thing is when I just like being able to surf, I like using the, the camera when it's good, but I have so many sessions that aren't like heavy barrels and, and I like to be able to like do airs and stuff. It's really hard to do the, the, proper airs with a GoPro in your mouth. Um, but you are right. There are some sessions I need to start doing that. It is cool. I mean, paddling out here is super hard. Um, and it's a, interesting. <laughs> it's showing the, all the aspects of that. Uh, let's see. Percent. Let's see. Eli monster. Thanks. I appreciate, appreciate the words. Um, Rick, how's it going? Uh, appreciate the, the support as well. And let's see, seasons come, seasons go. Yep, hills and valleys. It's not all, 
It's not all peaks. It's not all highs. You know, there's some, there's some lows. We all go through that. El Nino New Year. Yes. France trip. Uh, I don't have any funds to do any more trips this year. I basically spent it all on Namibia. So maybe next year I would like, you know, to travel more. I just honestly don't have the budget to, to do, you know, I could do two trips instead of one Namibia trip, but I'd rather do one Namibia trip than two trips somewhere else. So <laughs> a few walks of shame trying to make it out at OBX. Oh, oh, I got, I do walks of shame all the time. It's just, it's part of it. Uh, Danny Hess boards, laminate, wood cork frame. Dan Malloy says faster. Huh. I don't know. I don't know. I, anything real has, I can ride. So, um, that's, uh, that's up to them. Let's see. Winter season on the North shore. I talked to O'Neill about it a couple months ago and asked him if they were going to get a house again. And if they do, then I'll go out. Uh, if they don't, um, again, I'm like, I have no funds to go right now. So starting in 2024, I'll have a new budget and, you know, can hopefully do a trip again. I would like to go back to pipe. I have not been there since November of 2020, which is weird because for like eight years, I went there every year for four to six weeks. And so it was super strange when I stopped going. Uh, but basically just happened with the switching of when the houses were from November to January and then you know, budget to travel and stuff. And last year I actually ordered some of these boards over here, uh, all of those taller ones, six fours, six sixes, and a six eight, I ordered from AJW and Pizel for Hawaii last year, but I didn't make it because then I got into my ear surgery and it coincided at the same time with O'Neill having the house in Hawaii. So it didn't work out. I ended up having to ship my boards over here. And I've used them here. I've ridden the 6.4 Pizel. That thing goes really good. The next step that Nathan Florence rides all the time, highly recommend as a step up. That thing's magic. Um, so yeah, hopefully I get to take them over there. I think I, I think O'Neill might get the house in January, but I have yet to hear, so we'll see. Um, what happened to life on water clothing? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I still have boxes of it. What happened was it just people weren't uh, buying it anymore. Part of that was because maybe I, I did two runs of the same shirt. Um, but yeah, just we, we basically blew through the first round of orders, which was insane. And I was so pumped. And so we did another order with a different color and all the same logo. And basically after a year, <laughs> we still had most of the inventory. And so it wasn't worth us running the pain to have the website and, you know, have the stuff set up for shipping. And so we kind of shut that down until I got, you know, one, now that I'm back in, now that I'm in this new space and there's places to have that set up, maybe we will do relaunch the website and, and start selling stuff again. Um, but honestly, there's just other things in life I need to get in order before trying to do something extra, but it was a good season season and it was cool. I still love the shirts. I still wear them all the time cause they're soft. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get some more back out there someday. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, board project. I don't know what you mean by the bod. Next, Leonardo, uh, next trip to Iceland or Norway. I would love to go back to Norway. I've always dreamed of going back there. I went almost 10 years ago and uh, yeah, it's just crazy expensive. <laughs> and the waves are really fun, but they aren't like that wild. Um, so to spend that much money to go there is pretty, pretty gnarly. I would love to. Honestly, like if I had more bu travel budget, I would go to more places like that. And I would mostly go back to Iceland or mostly Iceland. I really want to go explore there more because I found some insane setups when I went five years ago. And I would love to go back to and see on different swells. But uh, yeah, it's just... It takes money to do that stuff. And so I, I do what I can with it. <laughs> um, gosh, this keeps closing the chat. Uh, to bought if, and it's sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, I just can't necessarily pronounce it. But if you remind me what the board project question is about, I can answer it for you. Um, what's the difference between boards today from years ago? Uh, years ago, I had a whole super quiver that was dialed specifically to me right now. I'm just picking boards off the rack. So, 
I'm getting a little lost in like what works and what doesn't, but it's been really rad because I'm finding that I needed to expand my horizons on what my quiver looked like. And now I'm having way more fun. So I'll go pull a couple, a couple off here in a second and talk you through them. But uh, let's see. Do you find the AJWs are too lightly glassed? No, mine don't feel light. Um, they feel pretty heavy actually, which I like uh, for, for tubes anyway. I mean, breaking boards with airs, you just, you break boards when you do airs. Any board does that. Um, here, while we're, while we're talking surfboards. See, this is, this is why I'm excited about this space. Because then, I can just come over here, set the tripod up. Give me, give me one brief, brief moment. Yep. And then we can talk boards. Um, so, currently, Currently, yo, what's up? Currently, one of my favorite boards that's totally out of my comfort zone that I don't ride, or that is like nothing I would have ever bought before or ridden, is this Christensen Lane Splitter, twin fan. Crazy tail. But man, I've had a lot of fun trying, like learning to ride this. It actually goes really well. Um, I, Always expected a board like that to be kind of hard to ride. I would say the first like handful or so of waves in a session, you're kind of you're kind of remembering how you ride it because it's different than anything else. But uh, super fun. Uh, let's see, what else have I been liking? Honestly, this uh, Almeric CI Pro. This is the 510. I like this board a lot. Did my best air of the fall on it so far, and. Uh, yeah, this is just stock off the rack. Grab it from Real Water Sports. Goes like a dream. I just picked up a CI 2 point pro so I can compare it. So that'll be exciting. And then honestly, this Pizel has been like the, the board that surprised me the most. This is the Pizel Radius. This board feels the most like any of my supers that I ever had, as far as like how thin the rails are, the glass job, I don't know. But I would say it's, it's better. It, uh, there's more rocker in this board, which I really like. And like I said, I ordered those boards when I was going to Hawaii last year from Pizel and from AJW, and I wanted to order a short board. So I was gonna order the Highline, and when Trip from Rio went to put in the order, Pizel told him like, hey, all the team guys over here ride the Radius on the North Shore, do you want me to make them that instead? And I was like, well, he would know better than me, so yeah, let's do it. And I didn't get to ride it for six months because I've been filming all like these other boards for under the glass season two with real and surfline. And, uh, I finally got to ride this in Peru. Uh, went there in July, which O'Neill just released their edit. You should have been here tomorrow. They released it today. Um, so go check that out when you're done with this. And I got to ride this, but the waves were pretty bad. So I only rode it one session. So I didn't get a feel, but I rode it this, this fall and the thing goes insane. And, uh, it's kind of my, my favorite high performance shortboard right now. I think because it's custom, I can't say in relation to the driver, the, my driver 3.0s are custom too, and they're the same dims as this. And this came out amazing, and those came out kind of heavy. Uh, the CI Pro feels really good, but I think it's a little too beefy for me, for my size. So I think if I get a custom one, then I could dial it in. But this radius is like primo, I love it. Those are kind of the main boards I've been riding this fall. Uh, I got a driver 2.0 that I've ridden a few times. And then obviously like, what, what do we have over here? We got, those are driver 3.0s. We got the GOAT. Now that's the AJW Potato Launcher. Rode this in Namibia, love it in the tube. And then the Ghost. Honestly, I gotta say, I like the Potato Launcher better in the barrel than the Ghost, personally. Uh, the Ghost is way better well-rounded, like, if you're gonna buy one board that kind of does everything, I would say it's the Ghost. If you're buying a tube-specific board, I think the AJW Potato Launcher is better. Um, I haven't found anything, I haven't read anything from Lost or anyone else that kind of fits those molds. I did ride a Lost Step Driver. Felt all right, it feels a little heavy. Um, kind of is in the same batch of boards as the Driver 3.0 that I said felt heavy, so. I don't know if there was just an issue with like the glassing of those boards, or, or what happened, they're just different than like any of the other losses I've had, so. 
I really just need to reorder. Um, oh, here, hold on. This is a super weird board that I would have never thought of grabbing. Maurice Cole. What is it called? It's a reverse, reverse V shorty FF. I don't even know what all that stands for, but look at this tail. Look at that. I don't know if you can really see what's going on there. Lots going on, and then it's got super sharp rails all the way up. Um, beaked out nose. But I, I tell you what, it actually rips. <laughs> I've been able to like, I haven't done any airs on it because it's a 6.0 and it's a little heavy. It's not, not for that. But it, it goes on rail sick, and it's a super fun board. I want to ride it in barrels. Um, I just kind of haven't committed to it yet, which is my own fault. But I have been enjoying it. Sharp rails up the whole board is really bizarre to me, but it actually goes really well. The only thing I would say holds it back is that as soon as the wind comes up and there's some chop on the face, it's, uh, <laughs> well, that's where you, you see it start having issues. So we'll uh, come back down in here. Um, I'll check on some questions again. Let's see. Um... You need to try some funky stuff, some ASIMs. Uh, I'm not, I have tried a couple of my buddy, Scott Romig shapes ASIMs. I've ridden a couple of his. I did ride one that actually felt pretty good, but I like a symmetrical board. There's something about it just makes way more sense in my head. And when sometimes in surfing mental, that's a big part of it. So, um, if your head's not right, it doesn't matter what your board's like. Let's see. Literally just fish. What you got on five, nine, five, ten time. I have a hard time going backhand on twin fins. Backhand on twin fins. I just spilt my coffee all over my pants. <laughs> um, I tried to put it in my lap and it got, my finger got caught on the handle. I'm just gonna keep talking because Nothing I can do now. Um, what was the question? Backhand on twin fins. Yes, I would say backhand on twin fins is hard, but on that board, on the lane splitter, I have been enjoying it. No way. I didn't know that you designed the um, real logo. That's sick. Any fish? Fishes for the grovelly days. Honestly, I ride that lane, lane splitter or I ride the, uh, for the real small days, I've been riding the Ryan Sakel soapbox, soapbox derby. That board's sick. It's, it's basically the same as the old fling. Um, let's see. <laughs> no foam on the, on the rack. <laughs> let's see. Sub driver off the rack, didn't really realize it was super heavy, haven't ridden it since. Well, you can always just sell it and, and swap for a new board, you know. That's, I have a buddy, he like buys boards, if he rides them twice and doesn't like him, he flips them. And you know, it's, a brand new board isn't gonna go as well. You could also just return it if you haven't ridden it, but yeah, that's a hard one. Um, uh, let's see. Look, yep, pants are the same color. I guess, these are my favorite pants. <laughs> Compare the Driver 3.0 to the CI Pro. Honestly, I need to get another Driver 3.0. Um, uh, Ghost for a trip board. Ghost is a great board to take on a trip. Goes good in the tube, goes good on rail, step ups. Like, Ghost is, I basically don't really wanna go anywhere without my Ghost. Quads or thrusters? I'm a thruster guy all the way, uh, always. So, gosh dang it. I can't believe I did this. Oh, I got some paper towels. Here, give me a second. <laughs> I'm like wet. Look at, this is crazy. It went everywhere. Look at this. Look at the floor. I don't know if you can see it. It's from here. It's It goes all the way over there to here. 
it's like I punched my cup. That's, that's basically what it looks like happened. Um, I guess this is just, I really, just, we've already kind of, we've been live for 40 minutes now. I've kind of touched on everything I wanted to touch on. Um, but you can expect more of these live feeds. Like I said, I'm going to have a setup in here. I don't know how long it'll take me. I can't really afford chairs or a couch right now. Um, I don't know when I'll get that set up, but, uh, I'm going to do more talking things. It's caffeine on the go all the time. Um, and so this, this will become more of a regular thing. Wait, what was the question? How many, how many cups of coffee do you drink a day? Two. I have one in the morning and I wait and I have one either late morning or midday. Rare, rare occasions, like probably once a month, I'll have three cups of coffee in a day. Um, maybe twice a month if like something crazy is going on. But no, I only have two cups of coffee a day. Because I, I don't want to drink that much caffeine. And I always have them... Um, like, I wake up and have a cup in the morning. And then I'll have one after lunch, usually. Hot or cold, depending on the time of year. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm excited, y'all. I just basically wanted, like... I feel like I've been so quiet online for quite a while now. And now that things are finally in motion, like I just got my desk set up like 10 days ago and just organized this like four or five days ago. Now that I finally am like getting somewhat caught up and a little bit clearer head, uh, I just wanted to kind of update you guys on life, what's going on. And um, yeah, gonna, gonna uh, keep doing stuff like this and keep y'all in touch. And yeah, man, sorry to, sorry to hear about Miss Donna. Let's see. These last ones. Do you recommend a Ghost XL if you want the extra liters or two, but don't want to add inches? Uh, I'm not sure. I've only ridden the Ghost Pro. I, I can't, you know, how what you do liter wise, like volume wise and size wise, is depending on your ability. For every, it's for everyone that's different, and so it's kind of hard to say for stuff like that. Um, yes, I am planning to come back to Morocco. I uh, came for the surf event, the nighttime surf event at Safi last year. I believe I'll get invited back, and if so, I'll come. Um, if not, then then probably not. But uh, I would love to come back for a big swell. Um, yes, I'm still on Hatteras Island. Uh, I did not move far away at all. <laughs> I will forever be here in Buxton. <laughs> oh, wait, can you hear me? I don't know what you missed. Um, anyway, all right, I'm gonna roll. We're just rambling now. People are dropping off because I said I was going to leave. And I'm still still just reading comments. But um, yeah, you guys have a good one. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate all the support. I appreciate that you joined this live feed and that you listened to me talk on like, look, this, is, this was my setup. <laughs> this is just a, just a tripod <laughs> with a little, little camera mount, selfie mount. Um, and yeah, wait, who had the idea about getting a... Gosh, dang it. He had the idea about sponsor for the furniture and rooms to go may be interested. <laughs> I'll have to check that out. I don't, I don't think it's stuff like that. <laughs> I'm just like, well. Wait, audio died. So y'all, I just realized I just got two phone calls in a row. I think both times the audio dropped because of the phone call. So um, yeah, anyway, I'm really excited for what's to come. And gonna let you guys go from here. So have a good one, y'all.